Good morning all. Well, here's a rack consisting of a main processor card, the CPU card, analog input and output, digital input and output, and a power supply, all common to the back plane back here. Now, have you ever wondered to yourself, how did that processor know how to talk to each individual card, how to read and write data to those individual input output analog input output digital input output cards. Well I'll show you one way it was done. Let me move this out of the way and I've got a breadboarded circuit. Now here's the breadboarded circuit that we're going to use to test the 74 688. That's an 8-bit magnitude comparator I see. We're going to set the card's address with this dip switch and then this dip switch right here is going to simulate the address bus. Over here we have a 74244 octal buffer. Now what happens is we set the card's address with this dip switch when the when the processor wants to talk to this card, to read or write to this card, it puts that address on the address bus. And when both these compare, the card's address and the address from the processor, when they are equal, the output of the 74688 goes low. And that enables, the output enables, of the 74244. Now I've got LEDs down here indicating the 8 bits of the data bus. So when the 74244 is enabled, all of these LEDs will be on, indicating that the highs on the 8 bits of the input of the 74244 have made it to the output. Isn't that fascinating? Now I've got also got an LED over here. This indicates when the output of the 74688 has gone low. It will turn on when both the card's address and the address bus on the, the back plane from the processor are equal. The output will go low turning on this LED also. Let's watch this board work. Let's test the circuit. I'm going to set the card's address to 5. That's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now the address bus from the CPU is all zeros right now. Let me apply 5 volts to the circuit. You can see that all of the LEDs are off. I'm going to set the CPU's address to 5. This is on the address bus from the CPU card. And look at that. The card's address of 5 and the address bus is 5. The output of the 74688 has gone low, indicated by this illuminated LED. And that enables this octal buffer inputs to pass through to the outputs. Now I've got all highs on the inputs. All of the logic inputs to that 74244 are set to 5 volts. And over here I have LEDs turned on indicating to us that the input of the 74244 has passed to the output side of the 74244, turning on the 8 bits inside that card, allowing the data bus to pass from the back plane into the card because the card's address and the address bus are equal. Isn't that amazing? So that's how the processor card 
can pass data from the data bus into the card. Let's try another address. Let me turn the address bus all to zero. There's zero, 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 zero. Let's try address nine. That's zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. And now we're going to set the address bus to nine. Ah, look at that. Now the data bus is allowed to enter that card because both the card's address and the address bus from the processor card are equal. That's amazing. That is amazing. Try another address. You set the address bus to zero. Let's try address 15. That's zero, 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 one, 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 one. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. The card's address of 15. The address bus, 15. The data bus is allowed to pass into the card. That's one way it was done. That was one way it was done. Not too long ago. When I get back to the house, I'll show you the schematic of this circuit right here. And you can experiment with your own circuit. We got a little bit more work to do here at the shop. When I get done, we'll talk about the drawings. Thank you very much for stopping by. I always enjoy it when, <laughs> when y'all come over to see what I'm experimenting with next. Hope y'all's having a good day. We're having a good day here. We'll see you next time. Even at all, we're at the house. Let's see if we can get this done before the sun sets. <laughs> and we gotta get up and go back to work. Now here's the breadboarded circuit. Here is the dip switches for the cards address. And here's the address bus. Now I'm simulating the address bus on the back plane with another set of eight dip switches. Now I've got pull up resistors right here. I didn't draw them all in, but each of these eight bits and these eight bits have pull up resistors. Uh, yeah, especially needed up here for the cards dip switch settings of the address. Uh, I got a 1K pulled up to five volts. When the switch is on, then that input on pin 17, 15, 13, 11, 8, 6, 4, or 2, depending on which switch is on, is pulled down to logic zero, ground. When the switch is open, these pins will be high based upon which switch is open, pulled up to logic 5 volts. Now we have 8 bits on the P inputs, and we have 8 bits on the Q inputs. When they are equal, the output P equals Q bar goes low. That's pin 19. Now here on the breadboarded circuit, just to see to, that it has gone low, I've got an LED up here. The anode on 5 volts, the cathode to a 220 current limiting ohm resistor attached to a pin 19. So when the 8 bits of the P input 
and the eight bits of the Q input are equal this green LED turns on and it also output enables the 74 244 their active low also indicated by output enable one bar output enable two bar here is the data bus of that card so you have address bus and data bus when the output enables of the 74244 are active the data bus enters the card through the 74244 now I've got eight LEDs I only drew one set of LEDs in uh, I didn't want to make make this uh, drawing look too complicated but each of these outputs of the 74244 will have a resistor this is a 220 ohm resistor and an LED anode to cathode to ground now if I got a high on the data bus which I did on our board each of these inputs to the 74244 I pulled up to logic 5 volts so I have a high here high 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 plus 5 volts high and that would pass through the enabled 74244 and turn on the 8 LEDs there you go <laughs> so when the 8 bits of P are, and the 8 bits of Q are equal. P equals Q bar goes low, activates that 74244, and that data bus enters the card. Nice. This is one way it used to be done. We still see this, believe it or not. We still see this to this very day. Here we are in the 21st century and still seeing stuff from the 20th century. <laughs> now, uh, let me backtrack a little bit on these addresses here. I used like address 5 and address 15. Uh, simulated that down here on the address bus. Uh, but, you could have this set to address 4,000, address 8,000, uh, address 2,013 or 2,014. Uh, you could have it addressed to 8,001. It all depends on who the address bus is attached to. For simplicity's sake, I used address 5 and address 15. At the end of the video, I'll make close-ups of each of these individual circuits right here so you can see the pin and the labeling of the ICs. Oh, one more thing. We're writing into that card. Uh, say for a digital output but what if we want to read a digital input well we turn this IC around <laughs> so that instead of uh, inputs to the card they would be outputs from the card there you go that's everything Let's put this into the computer so y'all can see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Folks, I hope y'all's having a good day. We're not doing too bad here. We're still on this side of the dirt. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time.